In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the lines Photoshop action. So this is my stock photo here, and this is the effect we're going to create in the tutorial. Um, the action actually comes with five different styles, which I'll just quickly show you now. Uh, but moving along here, uh, you can easily add color uh, back into your photos. So the default uh, look of the action will be black and white, but I'll show you how to easily add color. Um, so clicking along here, this is the second style that the action uh, produces the third, fourth, and fifth. And I'll just keep clicking along here because I've got a few more examples of the effect. And you can color. Uh, the lines individually, which I'll show you how to do. Oop, I've run out of room, so I'll just. Okay, where was I? 5, 5A. Lastly, this one. So that. Okay, I'll close all these windows down. Get back to our um, base photo. So there's a few important things you just need to check off before uh, running the action, just to make sure you get no errors and everything set up correctly. So firstly, uh, if you look into the layer panel here, your photo layer needs to look identical to that. It should say background and have the lock symbol. So, for example, if it doesn't, and you only, only need to do this step if it doesn't look identical to this. So, for example, if it's called something else, um, when you open up your photo, just go to Layer, New, Background from Layer, and it sets it as a background. So, yeah, you only need to do that step if it doesn't look identical to that. Okay, so still in the Layer panel, go up to this top right-hand corner icon, go to Panel Options, down the bottom, make sure Add Copy to Copy Layers and Groups is selected. Click OK. Next, go to Image Mode. Make sure you're in RGB Color Mode and 8 bits of channel is selected. Uh, go to Image, Image Size. You want to make sure that you're using a high resolution photo. So you can see mine's 2600 by 3000 at 350 pixels per inch. So uh, you want to avoid using small photos. So don't use this action on photos under 1000 pixels. Uh, it'll still work, but the effects won't look that great. Um, the best range is probably between 2,000 to 4,000 pixels. Um, so just keep that in mind. Okay, I'll cancel that. So what I need to do now is create a new layer. So go to Layer, New Layer, or Control Shift N or Command Shift N on the Mac. Uh, call it Brush. Must be all lowercase, otherwise the action won't work. Click OK. So with the brush layer selected, uh, you want to trace around your subject, and that's where we're going to apply all the effects. So uh, rather than watch me do that, I'm just going to open up uh, one I've already brushed over. So here I have my brush layer. You can see I've um, traced around my subject, so that's where I want to apply all the effects. So what we need to do now is load up the actions panel. So go to window, Actions, it'll pop up here. Go up to the top right hand corner icon and go to Load Actions. Select Lines, so ATM. And here's uh, the five styles to choose from. Okay, so uh, what we need to do now is load up the brushes. Uh, so if I hit B on the keyboard, okay, and uh, what you want to do is go to this top right hand corner icon and go to replace brushes okay place brushes and select lines brushes .abr that was included in the download and these are the brushes that are used to help create uh, the overall effect okay so everything's pretty much set up now uh, all you need to do is click on one of these styles and click play on the action but there is one important thing to note about um, 
the opacity of your brush before you play the action and I'll just demonstrate that so uh, at the moment my opacity is 100 I'm just going to turn it sorry it was 80 I'm just going to turn it up to 100 I'm just going to open up some examples here uh, if I can find them here they are open up these two okay so with this one here um, before I play the action I had my brush opacity set to 100% so if you hit B on the keyboard you'll, you'll get your brush out and you'll see the opacity handle up here so that's at 100% this one was at 60% okay so for this example I turned this down to around 60% somewhere around there so you can see that it's created a much lighter effect okay so keep that in mind if you want to go uh, for a much bolder effect Set it at 100, uh, much lighter, set it at 60, but anywhere between 60 and 100 is good. Uh, you can also change like the brightness and contrast um, of all the effects after the action's finished anyway, which I'll show you how to do. So close those down. So yeah, so hit B, I've got my, my brushes there, it's all ready to go. Uh, my actions panel, got all my styles here, I'm gonna play style one. Okay, um, if, now if you wanna know how much longer the action's got um, to go, uh, use twirl open this arrow, and if I just click play now, it'll start playing the action. But you see the scroll bar here starts to go down, so that's basically how much uh, it's got to go. So when it gets to the bottom, it's finished. The action takes around two minutes to play back, so I'm just going to um, fast forward the video and yeah, we'll go from there. All right, so the action stopped, and this is the re result that I got. So I'm just going to close up the actions panel and go inside the layer panel now. So what I always like to do when an action's finished is collapse all the folders that are open. So to do that quickly, you just hold down Control Alt or Command Option on a Mac, and with this folder that's already selected, just click on the arrow, and it just collapses all the folders there. Okay. So if you want to run the action again, you just uh, Shift select these two uh, layers or folders and delete that. So I've kept the brush layer on at the top here, so you can then um, try for another style. So you try any one of these, uh, but also keep in mind that uh, when the action plays, even if, if I ran style one again, the arrangement and the appearance of all these lines will be uh, randomized again, so you always get a different result. So, okay, so we'll go inside the lines style one folder now, so this, ha this houses everything pretty much, so go inside there. Um, color saturation, I'll come back to in a second. Uh, brightness control, you can use this one here. Whoops, let's, I'll just close this. Uh, you can use this slight, this adjustment layer to affect the overall brightness uh, contrast of your design. So grab these little handles here, um, move them around up and down. You can affect the um, appearance that way. Add highlight. I've got this one called Add Highlights Brush White. So if you want to um, boost some of the highlights in your design, hit B on the keyboard, get your brushes out, right click, go down the bottom and grab this soft brush. Okay. Switch this over, grab, make sure white is your active color. And if I start brushing over this layer, you'll see how it's really boosted up all the, all the highlights. So what you want to do is just brush softly into this layer. So I'll just turn my opacity down to about 29%. And if I brush over his face, see so I can just increase the highlights just a little bit. So I can just brush around the image here. And it's really just for fine tuning. So you can use that layer there if you want. Um, if you think it's too intense what you've brushed on, you can just have this layer selected, move your mouse over the word opacity, click drag to the left that'll bring it to zero percent and if I slowly drag to the right it brings on the uh, what we've just brushed on so you don't need to have it at hundred percent have it at say fifty percent so that looks good okay moving down I've got these two layers here in yellow uh, the first one is use original photo colors so if you want to overlay the original colors of your photo turn that one on okay and this is where this layer comes into effect, color saturation. If you double click on this one, uh, you'll notice that the overall saturation I've boosted up. So by default, that's the true colors um, of your photo, but just for this, for the default Ludus effect, I've just cranked up the saturation. 
So you can turn it up higher if you want, or bring it down, just like that. Uh, I'll turn it up for the moment. This one here, extend original colors. If you turn that one on, it might be a bit hard to see, but what it does, it takes the uh, colors of your photo and spreads it out a bit further, so it starts to overlap with all the lines outside of um, the photo. So I'll just zoom in here. You might not be able to see it too much, but if I turn it on and off, see this area here? Just watch that when I turn it on and off, so you can see the colors extend out. I think if I just duplicate this layer, I just hit Control J a few times. Yeah, the color is sort of intensifying there, so you can do it that way. Okay, I'm going to zoom back out. Okay, reveal normal photo, and I've got in brackets mask. So if there's an area of your photo that you want to um, make a lot more prominent, sort of reveal the original look of the photo, um, Select this mask, again use a white brush, hit B. Uh, if you want to flip, see how black is my active color and white is my background color. If I hit X, it'll flip those two over. So now white is my active color. So if I start brushing into that mask, I'll just turn the opacity all the way up. You'll see how I bring back my original photo, so I can just brush over all of it and it's like we've pretty much never really applied the effect. So, the, the way I like to use this layer, say if you run the action and you know a part of your subject's face has disappeared or you want to make it more prominent, what I like to do is just brush over the face like that, just make it really prominent, and what I'll do then is just with the layer selected, I'll just lower the opacity a bit so it starts to blend back with what we had beforehand. So you start to blend, um, we'll start to bring in more of those sketchy effects so you can create a, a good balance that way so another example is in shoes uh, let's brush I'll turn this opacity all the way back up again brush over his shoes bring all them those back in and now if I bring the layer opacity down you'll see it starts to blend with what we had beforehand so um, it's a good way to control the balance between the original photo and the effect okay uh, moving down, this uh, folder here, um, photo, I might just turn off all these for the moment, so I'll demonstrate this. So this has, um, this what's, this is a folder that houses the uh, original photo, not the sketch lines, just the photo. So we'll go inside here, and there's a few layers to play around with. Firstly is another brightness control, so you can double click on this one, play around with these, hand, with these handles here. Um, we can bring this one up to increase the brightness, just like that. So by default, I've actually, <coughs> excuse me, I've actually uh, made it a little bit darker. So you can drag this one back to the left and makes it uh, a lot lighter. So I'm just going to play around with this for a sec. That's okay. Alright, so definitely play around with that one. These two here, brightness control and brightness, just uh, play around with those. So this one more uh, affects just the our original photo. This one affects everything. So if I play around with this one, you'll see it affects everything. So yeah, mess around with those two. Okay, so here we have photo detail one, two, and three. Now, um, the way I've set this up is, I'll just turn these two off for the moment. Photo Detail 3 is just, uh, if you look at the blend mode, it's set to normal, so it's just your normal photo. But I've just lowered the opacity down to 34%. If I turn it up to 100, um, you'll see, yeah, it's just uh, the original photo coming in. But these two here um, have blend modes of soft light. So um, if I turn them on and off one at a time, you can see how they, they affect the design. Um, it just helps blend the original photo with the background, all those lines much better. So if I um, hide this folder, you'll see how areas, uh, all these sketchy lines are darker than others. So here it's quite dark, it's dark over here. Um, with the blend mode of soft light, wherever it's darkest, so I'll put this one off, is where most of your photo is going to appear. So like I said, it was quite dark around here on his hand. 
his torso here, we'll have a look at that. Yeah, it's much more dense over here. So keep that in mind that um, the densest areas of all these sketchy lines is where your photo is going to appear the most. Okay? Um, and if you want to boost up, so I'll turn this one back on, just check the opacity of, the, the opacity of these layers. Like I can turn this one up to 100%. There, now my photo is much more visible. I can turn it down so it's, it blends much more of that sketchy effect. Um, or you can like, you can create a balance. So I could um, use this mask. So for example, if I hit B on the keyboard again, um, I'll brush black to remove it. So maybe I just want the top half of his body to be really visible. Just like that. And you can do the same with colors as well. You know, you could just um, use these masks. So you know, maybe I don't want colour down here. This one as well. So the colour sort of just fades on. So just, yeah, just be creative um, with how you use the layers and the mask. Okay, uh, what do I want to do now? So, I'll hide those two. I'm just going to turn this back down. Like that. Okay, this one here, add edge detail. If you turn this one on, it'll outline all the edges of your photo. So I'll just zoom in a bit here. I'll turn it on and off so you can see that. So that just helps if there's maybe there's a bit of lost detail. Say if I turn it on and off, say see around his forearm here. If I turn it on, it brings on a bit of detail around the edge of his body here. It starts to create a line. Um, if you want to make it more prominent, just hit Control J on the layer, you can just keep hitting that over and over and over, you can see now it's, he's clearly outlined versus, um, if I undo that, versus without it at all, so you can control, um, yeah, the visibility of all the outlines just with this layer here, and duplicate it over and over if you want it to be darker, okay? This folder here, sketch lines, I'll just turn that off for the moment, sketch lines. So without that folder, nothing's visible. Uh, because like I said, the layers inside here have blend mode set to overlay, so they fall down onto the layers below. So they're going to fall down and blend onto the sketch lines. So without them, there's nothing to blend onto but a white background. So I'll go inside here and I'll talk to you about what's set up here. So there are three different layers here. Small lines, medium lines, and large lines. So what I'll do, I'll just turn off the bottom two, actually. And you'll notice that above each one of these um, is a black box. That's actually how you can color the lines individually. So if I just double click in this box and pick a color, you can color that set of lines. But I'll, I'll just talk to the how this is set up. So um, each one of these actions, so for example, small lines here, um, small lines are the ones that will basically fill in most of your photo. They're the ones that aren't going to extend too far out of the area that you brushed. Maybe just a little bit, but not too much. Medium lines, if I turn that one on, they start to extend out a little bit further. So if you look around his hand here as I turn this on and off, see how the lines start to grow a bit more? And large lines, if I turn that one on and off, you can see again uh, if you look around the back of his head here, so I'll turn that on and off, you can see that's starting to grow out a bit more. So you've got small, uh, which are closest to the area that you brush, medium start to expand out, outwards from the area that you brush, and large is the furthest away. Okay, so what I always like to do in here is, what I showed you before, is play around with the colors. Uh, but what I also like to do is experiment with making um, different sets of these lines more prominent. So what I mean by that is say if I want the medium lines to be much more prominent, what I could do is shift select these two layers, the color and the medium lines. And if I hit control J, see how it's boosts the intensity of the medium lines. So I could do that with the large lines, shift select, hit control J or command J. If I just keep hitting it over and over, see how it keeps boosting the intensity of those lines, so I'm basically um, creating more copies of that layer and it's overlapping so it's building up 
um, the opacity of that layer. Okay, so yeah, you can just play around with the color of these. Actually, I might just make this one like a blue, and you know, see that's quite faint. So if I again shift like those, Control J, much more prominent. This one, um, I'm gonna make like a orange, and then this one. like that. So the small lines color is the one when you change the color it's always going to fill in basically all your photo with that color. Okay so you notice if I change this see that's filling in most of the photo and those other colors start to show because they're appearing outside of um, our photo. So I'm going to cancel that. Now if you turn if I turn on uh, these two layers here, the original colors, they will overwrite um, those colors there. It's not overriding there because remember that we added this mask. So if I just hide those masks, if I hold down shift to hide the mask, it will temporarily disable it. So now what you can see is that it's overridden all those colors that we just added there. Okay, um, because these two layers their blend mode is set to color and they're on top of all these other layers so their color is going to fall all the way down through this layer order and overwrite anything uh, below it okay so I'll just hide those and I might just turn all these back off um, if you want to have a lot more lines hit hold, uh, sorry, select the sketch lines folder hit control J You've just doubled the amount of lines then, because you go inside, um, you've got all these copies, so I mean you can you can move these around if you want, make it look really intense. If you want it all on one layer, just hit Control E. So now it's all on one layer. This layer here, vignette. If I turn that on and off, so. By default it's off, it just adds a, a nice soft uh, black edge around the design. Background color, so if you just uh, double click on this box here, you can um, change the background color easy enough. Cancel that. Uh, if you want to export this design with a transparent background, uh, there is one important step you need to do. So say I've uh, finished with my design, uh, what you want to do is select the line style one folder and you hit Control E to merge it all or Command D to flatten it all onto one layer. But when I do that, you'll notice that it, the entire design darkens a little bit. So uh, all you need to do is after you flatten it, so undo that. So select lines one. I'm happy with the, with the design. Control E or Command D. Now, if you go down to the bottom here and just create a new adjustment layer. Create a curves adjustment layer. All you need to do here is uh, grab this middle point and drag it up, and basically just brings the brightness back up to where it was um, before we flattened it. So that's all you need to do. So now what you can do is uh, hide these two background layers, just like that. So now the design is completely on a transparent background. So you can export this, say, as a PNG uh, or a TIFF with transparency and overlap that on top of um, your other designs. So I'm just going to undo that, get back to where we were. Next, I want to talk a little bit more about the brushes uh, that came with the download. Uh, so if I hit B on the keyboard, and right click anywhere over the canvas it brings up um, all our brushes so you know you can still utilize these brushes to add onto the on the onto the design so for example if I just select um, you know one of these and I'll just create a new layer I'll just go down the bottom here above vignette create a new layer if I just hit B now I'll so to change the size of brushes, you just use the square brackets, just like that. So if I just brush somewhere now, I've just added a new line, and I can move that around, I can rotate it, hit Control T, just like 
just like that. I could move that ring over his hand, like that. Um, create a new layer, Control Shift N or Command Shift N. Hit B, grab another brush. Um, maybe just this guy here. I'll brush that down there. I could hit Control I to invert to make it white, or Command I. And it's completely disappeared. Why has it done that? Um, I'll bring that up the lay order a bit more. Just like that. So you can have white lines as well. Just experiment with moving the layers, uh, sorry, the layers up and down through this layer order because it will affect the appearance as you just saw then. Um, so now another thing with these brushes, if I uh, hit B again and right click, if you scroll down the bottom here, if you take notice of this one, five, that's 500 pixels, okay, all the ones from here down to here um, were the brushes used to actually uh, build the effect. So for example, if I select one of these brushes and I'll just create a new layer, I'll create it down the bottom here. And if I start brushing, you'll see how they're completely randomized. Just like that. So that you can use those brushes to add onto the design. Just like that. I might just, what I'll do, I'll just hide these. Create a new layer again. So again, these ones down the bottom, 500 all the way through to 1700. When you use, when you select those and start brushing, you see how the, the effect that it's creating? Now all the brushes above it, if I just select one of these and start brushing, it doesn't um, create that random effect, it just creates one, basically. The same rotation, same opacity, but these ones are completely random, which is really cool. So, And if there's any gaps in your um, photo, so for example there's a gap here, the action couldn't pick up this area, it, it basically when this action plays, it won't, um, if it doesn't find much detail in a particular area, it won't fill it in. So just avoid using photos that are um, predominantly black or white or don't have much detail in it at all, uh, like no contrast. Like, so if you see up around his hat here, that's just a flat black. There's no detail in there for the action to pick up the details. So and if I turn this back on, you'll see how it hasn't quite filled it in. Same around here, there wasn't much detail at all. But if you want to fill that in, all you need to do is, yeah, create a new layer below sketch lines. Grab one of these um, brushes here that creates the random, uh, the random effect, and select one and start brushing away. So I can just brush over that area there, over his hands, over the hat here and now it's completely filled in. So just keep that in mind that you've got all these brushes here um, and to, yeah, to utilize them. So turn that one back on and that back on. So I've just built onto the base effect in no time at all. Okay. So that's uh, basically it. If you're having issues or troubles with the action, just send me an email. Um, I'll help you up there. Uh, but if not, have fun using the action. Thanks.